In this video, we'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the 2023 Ordinary Level Maths Leave Insert. I recommend you try the question before watching, and if you get stuck anywhere, feel free to ask for help in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. Check out my channel for a playlist with all the other questions. This is question three from paper two. And uh, in this question, it's, it's all about statistics. We're gonna be looking at some counting um, some data analysis, specifically a scatter graph. But A part one will be about counting, so let's jump into it. In this question, they ask us how many ways uh, can the letters of this word, kamogi, be rearranged? This is a very common question. It's very often asked in the exam. First of all, how many letters are in kamogi? Uh, there's seven letters. And how do we, how do we, how do we rearrange it? Um, so this is a very quick answer to this question, but uh, a lot of students get confused. Oh, why did you do that? So let me let me let me look at it on a couple of different ways here. Okay, how many different ways can we rearrange these letters? So what I would do is I'd put like seven, uh, four, five, six, seven, seven little spots for the letters. How many different letters could I put here in the first spot? This is how I would think about it. And I could put a C there, like Komogi has, or I could put an A first, because now we're rearranging here. I could put an M and so on. There's seven different letters I could put there. And then how many letters could I put the second one? So, some students put seven, but no, it's actually six, because remember, one of the letters is used. We can't have a C, C. Like, there's only one C here. Um, that's, that's something, a little aside is, uh, there's no letter here twice. It would be actually a harder question if there was. So I recommend, if you find this question easy, uh, pick, a new, pick a new word and see how it would change if I had two of the same letter. Okay, how many letters could go uh, third, be five, then four, then three, then two, then one. And to get the total number, what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say we multiply. Now this is just because this is what we do. But to prove it to you guys, because a lot of students, I think, find trouble there. Well, why do I multiply? Or even worse, actually, most students remember the multiply, but then they try and multiply everywhere. So uh, I, I don't like to just show it without uh, explaining a bit. And the best way I found to explain it is, let's just do this question with a much smaller um, word. Let's pick the word uh, C-A-B, cap. How many ways is there arranged this? So by the same system, it'd be three times two times one. But the van, oh, this three times two is six times one is still six. So there's six different ways. And the great thing about that is I can write them all down. And um, we can write C, A, B, C, B, A. Uh, we could have A, C, B. We could have A, B, C. And then we could have B, A, C and B, C, A. Only six different ways we could write that. And uh, I'm, I'm just gonna use this example to explain this one a bit more. Um, there is three different ways we could have the first letter. There's three different choices for the first letter. C, A, or B. There's two different choices within that choice. For the second letter, we could have A or B. And the same here and the same here. Once we pick C and A, there's only one choice for the last letter, just B. Now that same thing appl applies up here, but I'm not gonna be able to draw all of these. Uh, if you did this sum out here, uh, on a calculator obviously, it'd take you a few moments, double check your work, it'd be 5,040. That's, that's the answer to part one, A part one, by the way. Um, but obviously you couldn't write out all 5,040 of these examples. That's why I show you a little example. But um, it's useful for the multiply, to explain the multiply. There's seven different letters I could use for the first one. So just like here, I would draw seven boxes. Um, I'll do this quickly, because obviously we're not gonna draw them all. So this box would have all the letters begin with C. This would have all the box, all the letters, all the words begin with A, begin with M, and so on. But within this box, Within this box, there was two choices for the second letter. Within the, this one, there's gonna be six boxes for the second letter. 
and within that box there'll be five boxes within them there'll be four and that's true for all of these so that's where the multiply comes from um, we have to add up all of these numbers and to add up large groups of numbers is multiply anyway I'm sure most of you don't care about that you're just happy for me to tell you it's seven choices six five four and you multiply them all and that is the answer to this question multiply them all we get five thousand and forty okay let me rub this out and we go on to part two okay on to part two in part two they ask us how many uh, well they ask us how many of the arrangements from part one the five thousand and forty arrangements will start with the letter m and have a vowel at the end end with the vowel another way to say that is just to ask the question again how many ways are there to make a word out of these letters starting with m and ending with a vowel so I'll do it the exact same way I did the first part. Um, I, I like to just either draw a little box or a little dash here. Uh, four, five, six, seven. How many different choices is there for the first letter? Well, there's only one choice. We have to put an M there. The question told us they want an M here. How many, what else do we know? Uh, we know the last letter has to be a vowel. There's um, one, two, three, four four different vowels to pick from. So the last, part, the last letter has to be one of those four vowels. How many choices do we have for the second letter? Can't be an M, that leaves six, but it can't be one of the vowels. One of them are gonna get used there. So there's only five numbers left, uh, five letters left to go there. And again, there's only four here, three here, two here, and there's only, there'll only be one choice for this guy, if you did it all out every time. Uh, imagine yourself um, picking a letter at random, uh, except we're not allowed to pick for the first one. So we have to pick a, uh, was it an M? Uh, yeah, we have to pick an M. And then the last one, put all the vowels into a bag. We have to pick one of them. So that's gone. How many, then we put everything that's left into a bag. There'll be five of them at that stage. One of the vowels would be gone, the M would be gone. And that's, the. Same here, same here, same here, same here. Okay, this time we multiply all these letters out, put in a calc letter, and uh, I've done it here already. It's 480. So there's 480 different uh, words or ways we can write. I don't think they usually say words because obviously it's not gonna be a real word, most of them. So ways we can arrange these letters. Okay, if we move on to part three, how many uh, arrangements of three different letters can be made from the letters in the word Komogi? Right, so this time, instead of seven dashes, we're just gonna have three. So I'll just do this one really short, and then I'll talk a little about it. So how many different uh, three letter arrangements can we make from these letters? How many choices would we have for the first letter? Could be any one of these letters, so there'd be seven choices. Second one, there'd be six choices. Next, there'd be five. So how many different arrangements that are? Put this into a calculator, multiply these, and we would get that 30 times seven is 210. So there's 210 different letters, like C-A-M would be one, C-O-G, and so on. Like there's, you'll, you'll be able to think 210 of them. There is another way to write this question you, um, you, it would be more useful for honours level than ordinary level, but you'd definitely use it if you went to college to do any sort of statistics. And most students, if they go to college, will take a statistics class. It's just so useful for so many things. Another way to write this would be 7P3. Uh, and that's just, um, there's seven different total choices. You're taking three of them. How many ways is there to arrange it? P stands for permutation. You'll also see in math sometimes you'll see 7C3. We, we teach these, these are in the ordinary level. That's a choose or combination. Doesn't apply here. Uh, it, this would only apply if, uh, if, if it mattered which order, if it, yeah, if it didn't matter which order it is. So this would be a much smaller number. This number would come out as 210, just like we did here. You, this is not necessarily useful for you, but uh, it's another way to have wrote this. And in fact, a lot of students would have 
seen this question and the first thing they'd write is just 7p3 and you type that into a calculator you don't have to type 7 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 5 there's actually a button in your calculator for p and they'd instantly get the answer 210. so if you did that you probably don't have to watch this video you're probably good enough okay let me clean this and we'll move on to the next part okay on to part b in part b they give us these three scatter graphs apologies for my really bad drawing hopefully you have the have this on a page in front of you somewhere um, but they give you roughly these three drawings A, B and C and they give you some sort of a table like this they tell you one of these scatter graphs has uh, the, the, the correlation coefficient just double check I said that right they're at CC here one of these has the correlation coefficient of 0 0.95 one of them is 0 0.6 and one of them is minus 0 0.75 very simply they want you to put down which is which so uh, I'll um, I'll put down which is which and I'll, de I'll describe how I would know that and uh, how you should be able to know it and then part two of this question they want you to write down basically in English what I'm going to say um, I I'll write a little something down but basically have a listen to what I say here and any sort of translation of that they're just looking for some sort of meaning it doesn't have to be good English it doesn't have to be exactly right they want something okay so what am I looking at when I see this graph when I see this graph I see something going down I see so I see pretty much a straight line I see I it's um, yeah let me just add my own D here my own extra one um, dots that were just fully random you didn't know where anything was and um, if it was fully random that that would have a cor um a correlation coefficient of zero pretty much so what i'm looking for here is oh that's not random that looks like it's a straight line i see something there and it looks pretty close to a straight line the closer to a straight line um, I, I'm, I the closer to one we get except this is going down going down tells me it's a minus and it's a pretty good line so it's close to one so it has to be this one minus it's very close to minus one if I looked at that I would say something close to minus one and I see it here so that has to be a it's it's close to a straight line which gets me close to one and it's going downwards which gets me a minus again I'd look at this one I'd say that's pretty close to a straight line so I should be looking for something close to one and it's going up so it should be a positive so that'd be this one here so that'd be a B the last one here um, it's not fully random like I drew an, an extra random one there it's not fully random I see roughly something going up so it's it would be a positive number we have a positive wouldn't be zero it would be bigger than zero but it wouldn't be that close to one so I just know it's the one left over here see. basically I, I, I would guess there's a line going up but is it going up like that? Is it going like that? Is it going like that? I don't know. I don't know how well it's going up. This one, I'd be fairly, I'd, I'd make a pretty good guess exactly where the line was. Uh, one extra thing to say here, a lot of students think of a line and they think of the slope. And the slope, positive going this way, negative going that way. Same thing here. The, the one big difference is a slope of one does look like that roughly and then when it gets higher it goes bigger than one two ten a million something like that it doesn't apply here the coefficient doesn't work like that the only thing similar is when it's going up it's positive when it's going down it's negative okay then very last part they asked part two they asked to um, for scatter plot B for B um, explain why you picked it why did you put it here so um, what I'll do is I'll pause I'll, I'll edit the video and I'll write a bit of English over here what I would write uh, well what I would write would be a little more complicated but what I'd expect to see a student write but pretty much rewind the video listen to what I said for each of these parts listen to what I said for the part B and write something like that you will get full marks uh, questions where they ask you to explain they are not looking for you to be perfect they just want you to have a rough idea 
Okay, so what would I would roughly say here, well, let me edit and write it in English. So I would write something like this, but again, you could put it in your own words. I would write when it goes to the right and up, that means it's positive. So B had to be positive. The closer it looks like a straight line, the closer to one it is. So 0 0.95. So that's all the examiner is looking for. Something like this. They're, they're probably looking for two points. Something about how close to a straight line, the word is correlated, the fancy word. And then um, up and to the right, that would be positively correlated. Down and um, down and to the right, but a straight line be negatively correlated, and uh, less correlated, something like that. But again, anything in your own words is just fine. Okay, I hope this was helpful. If you have any follow-up questions, because statistics is a topic that does need follow-up questions. So if you have any follow-up questions, please put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.